Welcome to the second module on qualitative research titled Theories of Qualitative Research. It includes information on four major qualitative theories, constructivism, interpretivism, critical realism and feminism. At the end of this module, the student will understand the role of theories in qualitative research and learn the salient features of the major theories of qualitative research which are constructivism, interpretivism, critical realism and feminism. What is the role of theories in qualitative research? What do you need, why do you need theory for a research paradigm? The first is epistemological framework guides one as to how to obtain knowledge about the reality. In other words, theory guides the way as to how one can understand the world or obtain knowledge. Second role of theory is, it is an aspect of epistemology which is a broader framework which is giving this road map. The third point is, theoretical approaches give us the road map not only of what knowledge we are going to obtain and how are we going to start doing it, but how the whole journey is going to take place. It guides the researchers assumptions about the topics, research questions, methods, analysis and conclusions. There are four major theories of qualitative research, constructivism, interpretivism, critical realism and feminism. Constructivism. Crotty in 1998 defined constructivism in terms of ascribed meanings of reality. What is the meaning that I am giving to reality? According to him, all knowledge and all meaningful reality is dependent on human practices and is created through human interactions with other humans, living beings and universe within their diverse social contexts. Lived experience is the core word in constructivism that gives paramount importance to how the world is seen, felt and understood by the social actors. What do you mean by lived experience? Lived experience is the way I have lived my life, the way I have experienced the events the other people, how they behave, that gives meaning to the reality as I perceived it. Therefore, lived experience is different for different people in the same context and definitely different for people living in different contexts. Interactive and interdependent relationship between the researcher and the research is focused or is important in constructivism because for me as a researcher to understand how that person has constructed reality, I will need to develop that kind of rapport relationship with the research as he would share, he or she would share that meaning with me. Perception of reality is in constructivism is that reality is multiple, subjective, complex and not easily quantifiable because it is different from everybody. How are you going to quantify something which is so qualitative in nature? Cognizance to the influence of researcher and researched values, research site and underlying theory endorsed by the researcher on the process and outcome of the research. Context specific research outcome and interpretations are focused in constructivism where your lived experiences can be understood completely only within that particular context. Differences in the agency of construction of reality, who is constructing the reality, is it individual, group or community on several dimensions including power that leads to many forms of constructivism and a debate about the relative importance of human communities versus the individual learner in the construction of knowledge. 
constructivism says that reality is constructed okay, through lived experiences. Now, therefore, it is very complex because individual the way he behaves lives is also influenced by the neighborhood, the community, the state, the country and even changes at the global level. So, exactly how you are going to understand it, what is the context that you are going to take to understand this reality, that is the issue of debate in constructivism. The second theory is interpretivism. Interpretivists believe that the behavior of human beings is the product of how people interpret the world around them and these interpretations evolve as people interact with others. Interpretivism looks for culturally derived and historically situated interpretations of the social life or social world, where constructivism will look at how reality is constructed. Interpretivism will look at how it is interpreted. The way world is understood by the people is different by for different people as interpreted through the varied classification schemas of the mind. There have been certain differences in the proponents of interpretivism mainly related to the possibility of generalization. As I said qualitative research does not give as much importance to generalization as quantitative research, but still there is always this need of some kind of generalization whether it is possible so as to make your research more applicable in settings or contexts or um, working with people other than those whom you have researched, so as to uh, widen the scope of the applicability of research findings. Traditionally interpretivists have argue, argued that generalization is not possible in qualitative research, but there are some researchers like Williams who propose that qualitative research based on interpretivism also has the potential of generalization in moderation what he says as moderatum generalization. This moderatum generalizations are about a set of features rather than about the whole of the phenomena that can be experienced or recognized in a variety of situations and contexts. For example, gender discrimination, the way it is interpreted, the way it is experienced, the way meanings are attached to it can be different in different context for different women, but certain features of this gender discrimination can be generalized, can be said are common to a larger group of women. The third theory is critical realism. Critical realism arose in 1970s mainly in the dialogues and papers by Roy Bhaskar. It had an immediate appeal to social scientists as it offered a midway from extreme social constructivism on one side and purely quantitative data on other extreme of extreme positivism. It rejected the epistemic fallacy which defines reality with our knowledge of it. Critical realism does not limit understanding of a phenomenon, for example, a sickness or a disaster experienced by the researched merely as a part of their narrative or a function of what the researcher makes sense of them. It believes in an objective reality which exists independently of our thoughts and whose discovery is one purpose of knowledge acquisition. It says that everything is not subjective. As I said, something can be generalized, some things are universal they might be certain differences within it, but a disaster is a disaster all over the world. Okay. A natural disaster is a natural disaster, it is interpreted as natural disaster by majority of people around the world and at the same time everything cannot be, cannot be reduced to numbers also. The way for example, one has experienced natural disaster, the aftermath 
of natural disaster and how he or she has coped with it will cannot be quantifiable which will be common to all the victims of natural disasters that is what the critical realism is saying. It however accepts the tenet of constructivism that all description of that reality is mediated through the filters of language, meaning making and social context. For example, a person, an able person who has experienced a natural disaster will interpret it and will narrate it differently than a person with disability. Reality consists of a complex, multi-layered, multi-causal wave of interacting forces. According to critical realists, the phenomena can be broken down into progressively more stratified layers. This leads to a structure, an inner composition making each object what it is and not something else. The structure functions as a generative mechanism for the phenomena. Different simple structures lead to a complex structure because of their interrelationships and combinations. This combination is where certain path can be more generalized, more common and certain path which are very specific based on power, context and culture as well as socialization processes. As complex structures of relational wave are built upon these generative mechanisms, all phenomena can be explained in part by but not reduced to their underlying generative mechanisms. Critical realists seek vertical explanations which link events and experiences to their underlying generative mechanisms rather than their antecedent events and experiences. The next theory is feminism. Feminism as a perspective of qualitative research emerged from the perspective of critical inquiry. As all men and women are potentially active agents in the construction of their social world and their personal lives, feminists argue that their actions are historical byproducts of collective experience dominated by patriarchy. There is certain common among all the women in the world. For women, this shared experience is of marginalization and subordination. Feminism as a qualitative research perspective argues that research is not simply about women, it is for women. It opposes the patriarchal processes that create hierarchical order between sexes. So, it very clearly takes us. Stand. Feminism incorporates an activist perspective in research through three phase process, knowledge, consciousness, empowerment. So, it will not only stop at knowledge generation, through the process of knowledge generation, it will try to create awareness, consciousness of the power structures, the hierarchies and discriminations that women are facing and also ways to overcome these discriminations, to face these discriminations, to, to uh, empower themselves and come out of such situations. So, these are the four major theories of qualitative research. Within each, there are many as I have, we have also looked at in the first module, within each uh, of these theory, then there have been branches or types of qualitative studies that emerge. For example, as I said, feminism led to then gender studies. But these four are kind of umbrella to all uh, the theoretical approaches that have been taken in qualitative research studies.